And I've had men say to me, I love hearing when a woman needs my help because men want to feel needed. And we have come through a very huge time that we grew up in where feminism came up and um, I am woman, let me roar, and I'm going to step on you to get ahead of you. And we lost the cooperation of men. Did you push record? Thanks for tuning back into Second Act TV. Uh, Lisa Copeland, the dating coach for women over 50 and best selling author of The Winning Dating Formula for Women Over 50, is back joining me for another segment talking about guess what? Finding love after 50. <laughs> Lisa, thanks so much for staying over. Oh, gosh, Silky, I love it. You know, helping women is like my biggest passion to help them make this dream come true of finding the right man. One of the big issues you and I talked off camera is even, you know, is the, the way we talk with men or to men. I'd like to uh, say with men because that's probably the preferred way to communicate. And I know a lot of our viewers, a lot of viewers are men, you know, they are, you get some ugly comments about the feminists. I don't, you know, women don't know how to treat men, blah, blah, blah. Well, a lot of that is true though also, and I really like to go there. And let's let's bring up some points where someone can, well, gosh, am I doing this? I don't even realize it. You know, how do we talk with men without emasculating them? So learning to speak with men is what is going to make dating so much easier for you. We make it so hard when we don't know how to, to speak the language they speak and hear. And I remember crying a lot when I first started dating after a long marriage ended because I wasn't getting first dates. I wasn't getting second dates because I didn't understand men. I didn't understand the way they, t they think and that they're the way their mind works. So one of the biggest things is actually we as women, we come from a place of community. So we speak from a place of community. Men speak from a place of stepping up to keep you safe, protected, and provided for. That is a huge disconnect to start with. You know what I mean? Yeah. The way that looks is for women. If I said to you, Silky, could you please help me move this table? What would you say to me? Sure. Of course you would. <laughs> Because it's for the betterment of the community. But when you say it to a man, you sound like some other female in his life. Guess who? Yeah, yeah. I get Yeah, his mom. mom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So in our DNA coding, if our DNA, men's DNA coding, it is really there to keep you safe, protected, and provided for. So to do it, you want to trigger a man's hero response. He really wants to make you happy. But when you talk to him from a place of community, he doesn't hear that uh, as I need to step up. He hears that as she is ordering me around. And so the difference is, is you use what I call the four magic words. I need your help. And men, I've had men say to me, I love hearing when a woman needs my help because men want to feel needed. And we have come through a very huge time that we grew up in where feminism came up and um, I am woman, let me roar. And I'm going to step on you to get ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And we lost the cooperation of men. And, you know, it, it hurt us because then we started to have to do everything ourselves. Yeah. No, exactly. There are I mean, obviously, I, I, yes, equality. I mean, we should all be paid the, th the same. I, I mean, I don't think anybody would argue oh, yeah. with that anymore. I, but we are different. Men and women are different. <laughs> it's hard for us as women to ask for help because we've had to learn to be so strong and we, in some ways, are like, oh my God, so he's going to help me. But why should I let them? I could do it myself. And we almost feel guilty for letting someone help us. But on the other hand, we're worn out. As women, we're a generation and 
of worn out women. And I think um, our kids' generation are even more worn out, but they do have more help from men because they did not grow up with these gender roles of father knows best and Donna Reed, like we did. <laughs> you know, it was at June and Ward Cleaver, you know, those were real specific gender roles. And we just feel guilty because we think he brings the money. And so I should do everything for him. And we end up over giving. I can't tell you the number of my clients when I'll say to them, do you over give? And they go, yeah. And I say, and how's that make you feel? And you know what they say to me? Exhausted, resentful. Resentful. Because what, mm -hmm. what they're doing is they're training men to stop giving to them. And men want to give. They really, really do. Yeah. You know, it's 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 in their coding. <laughs> to make I tell you, happy. that is one of the hardest things that I've had to learn in this restarting process. Uh, because I, I mean, I was married 25 years, but still I kind of did ever. I mean, I made a lot of mistakes. I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, but the idea of asking for help, that was a sign of weakness. <laughs> right. That's how women perceive it. It's a sign of weakness. And it's actually your greatest strength because you're going to get help versus doing it yourself. Yeah. Well, how do you apply that, Lisa, in the early part, part of a relationship? I mean, when you first date, how, how could we make someone aware, perhaps, do, you know, use these words even on a date versus... Okay, so one of the things you want to do is, um, let's say you go on a date, and I knew I had a client once. She went on a she went on a date. She met the guy for the date, and she just really they met at a bar, and she just really wanted that drink right away. I mean, she was ready. <laughs> she had a bad day. Well, instead of saying, you know, could you do me a favor? Those are the five magic words. Could you do me a favor? I like so. I've had the worst day and I could just use a drink and nobody's come by and he'll get the picture there and he'll go, oh my God, yes, let's get you what you need. Instead, she stood up, she went over to the manager, she complained and she got back to the table, the waiter came and then the man said to her, you emasculated me mm. because she took control. Yeah. Now, some women would say, but I, I know how to do it. Why shouldn't I do it? And yeah, you do know how to do it, but let him do it. You don't have to do everything. I guess it's reframing of you've had to do everything. You have someone there now that can really help you. So you don't have to do everything. And it's actually a wonderful feeling to let someone give to you. It's a gift. <laughs> Wow, it's so funny when you were saying that. I remember, a, well, in the early before I met Paul, it, a date I was, or I did that almost, almost exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we had horrible service. I wanted us to have a good day. It's like I, oh yes, it's see. This is why I like having these conversations. And so maybe somebody else, you know, listening will go, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. Stop doing that, <laughs> and and. And constant, yeah, on those words, I need help. And could you do me a I favor? I need your help. I need your help. I, I, yeah, I need your see, help. See, I can't even remember it. It's so hard for me to say that. <laughs> It's very difficult. A great way to start is going to the grocery store because right now we can go in the grocery store <laughs> and go up to the produce guy and just practice saying, I need your help. I'm baking a pie and it calls for tart yet sweet apples. What do you suggest? And you watch him. He will puff up because he gets to help you. Really, men want to make you happy. They want to make your life easier. So he will puff up. He will go over there. He will show you the apples and and then you take the apples and do not put those apples back down while you're in that produce department because then you're emasculating him <laughs> because he did, he did, he was, he gave you his wisdom, you know, what he thinks is his wisdom. But, and if you emasculate men, you know, I said, like, if you ask a man for help and he will literally puff up to help you when you em emasculate a man, you can watch his body literally cave in. It caves in. It's like saying no, no, no to a dog. And on top of it, you train a man to stop giving to you because he said he thinks I'm never good enough for what I do is never good enough. She's never going to like what I do. Mm hmm. That's a big mistake we as women make yeah. in that way.
and trusting them to get us where we need to go. You want to hear that one? (laughs) (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Don't make him stop and ask for directions. (laughs) Okay. Yes. They don't stop and ask for directions because they have a job. Their job is to keep you safe and protected. And if they stop and ask for directions, they think they look weak in your eyes and no man wants to look weak. Now, remember, he's coming from hero. You're coming from community. So for you, of course, we would ask for directions because as a community, we're meant to help each other. But he's coming from hero. He wants to look like I can get you there and we can, you know, I can get you there safely. And it drives us crazy, but it's that disconnect of how we're coming to the table that we don't understand. But an example of that is also when you say to a man, you got in the car and you're going to, let's say, a restaurant. And he turns left when you know going right is the fastest way. And when you say, you should have turned right there. Um, and he, what you're really saying to him is, I don't trust you to get me where we need to go. And that's a man, that emasculates men. Yeah. Very, very yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Uh, God, these segments go by so fast. We've got a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's amazing how much I can relate to this, you know, and, and I'm hoping others too. Also, you know, a lot of you guys listening, I know we've, we have like a 60, 70% male audience. What do you think what Lisa said? Do you agree? Has this happened? I'd love to hear your comments and give us constructive input uh, because we do want to learn. We do want to be made aware of this. This is why so many people watch or women watch this channel. So I'd, I'd love to hear your comments. Lisa, uh, what anything else real obvious that we just must include in this segment? I would also say with men, what, what drives women crazy about men is when we want to share a story with them and he comes in and he wants to fix it. So what's happening here again is as women, we would share a story as a community But a man's coming in from that hero of, I need to fix this for her so it makes her life easier. Really, men are amazing. If you really understand them, they're really amazing. It's just we want them to be like us and they think we're like them. But I know my clients have said to me so many times, my life changed when I really understood men. So the biggest thing to remember is, so if you want to tell a man or share a man a story and he doesn't need to fix anything, what you want to do is you want to say to him, can I share something with you? It doesn't need to be fixed. It will take me like five minutes or less because a man also cannot follow when you go from point A to point F to point G to point Z back to A because he can't figure out what you need what you need help with, what he needs. So when you say to him, I don't need you to fix, I just need to get this out of me, you're telling him it's okay, relax. And we as women, we fill up and we need to dump. So that is what we're doing is we're getting it out of us and we're processing it. But if you really need to process something and you need to go from A to Z to F to G, process with your friends, <laughs> you know, a man can only last so much of that because there's nothing to, you know, he's looking to fix and you can really overwhelm him if you don't keep a time limit on it and say, this is what I need. I so had to learn that. I still do. <laughs> I think the big, do. yeah, I think the biggest takeaway uh, for me and I think for probably a lot of women listening in this segment is, is those magic words. I love that. You know, I need your help or I want your help. And I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to tattoo it my forehead. And I could you do me a favor, it, please? It triggers in him. It triggers. She... I need to make her safe, protected, and provided for. It triggers that DNA coding. Yeah, I love it. I need your help. Or could you do me a favor? Yeah. Well, Lisa, we will link to all of your information to your website. So uh, anybody out there wants to contact Lisa directly, you can do so. You have wonderful articles. If you Google Lisa, she like pops up number one, <laughs> dating over 50 <laughs> coach. So I'm just so happy to have had you back. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk again soon and see you next time on Second Act TV. <laughs> If there's a 
a topic that you'd like to have us cover, please visit our website, secondact.tv. We have a little suggestion box on the upper right-hand corner of our site. Just click on that, send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.